Hey guys, Zen here, and today we're getting into Operation Neon Dawn, the final season here for Year 5, and one of the biggest shifts to Rainbow Six Siege. Now, this season isn't as stuffed with content as the previous one, and I don't think many people will be calling it Siege 3.0, but the changes that have been made, I think will be far more impactful moving forward, and they'll affect every piece of the meta, and ultimately change what's been the norm since the very beginning. And so first up, it's nothing short of a rework to Jaeger. Whoa, how did we get here? That's a pretty cool effect. Well, it was done using Demo Creator, an easy to use screen recorder and editing software and the sponsor of this video. So guys, I'm always asked how to start making videos and what tools to use to get the job done and Demo Creator by Wondershare has intuitive features that make it easy to get started. So once you start a new recording, as you can see, you have the option of recording any portion of your screen or there's always the ability to record your entire display and capture all of your gameplay. You can choose to record either full screen or with game capture and there's multiple frame rate options climbing up to a buttery smooth 120 frames per second. Of course, you can add sources like a microphone and a camera and really get a full presentation prepared. Once you're happy with your footage, you can import it into the editing software portion of Demo Creator and get to work putting it all together. On the left, you'll notice a healthy amount of effects, titles, and transitions to give it a unique look and feel. Once you're done, you can easily export it out and upload it to sites like YouTube and build your empire. And so guys, down below in the description, you can click the top link to download Download Demo Creator for free and try it out for yourself. There's also a link to purchase Demo Creator at 20% off this month. And if you use code SENZEN10, you'll get an additional 10% off for a full 30% discount on your order. Check below to find out more. And thanks to Wondershare for sponsoring our video. So as we all know, Jaeger is the most dominant operator on defense and has been for almost every year since Rainbow Six Siege has been released. The combination of the 416 assault rifle and the ADS gadget has just been so powerful in the meta that when he's not there, you're almost always at a disadvantage. But this entire formula is coming to an end because the ADS has been reworked with Neon Dawn and will have a totally different effect. So as it is today, the ADS will burn two projectiles in rapid succession and Jaeger of course gets three of them so he can take out six attacker projectiles with his kit. Now though, the ADS will only burn one projectile or grenade every 10 seconds and so the days of an operator using three flashbangs to burn out his utility are essentially gone. Now to make it a bit less punishing for Jaeger, the devs have made the ADS work infinitely. You can no longer burn it out, and thus it'll stay active in a part of the round unless you of course take it out. Otherwise, it will always have a presence. So this does a few things. First off, it fundamentally changes how attackers will use utility to deal with an ADS. Right now, the plan is laid out. Make sure you bring an op with disposable utility like flashbangs, and you use it to burn out as many charges from the ADS as possible. It opens up an opportunity for more lethal or important utility to be used like frags or concussion nades and you can plan a push around these tactics. After the rework, that is essentially gone. Even if Jaeger stacks them on top of each other, after the first three, the attackers have 10 uninterrupted seconds of spamming whatever they've got pretty much anywhere throughout the objective. Now, the second thing it does is change what the secondary gadget meta looks like on attack. Again, right now, especially in higher ranked, you know to bring a flashbang operator to counter Jaeger, but I think now you'll see different kinds of secondary gadgets because that tactic just isn't super necessary anymore. The last Last part is another subtle buff to Wamai. He's now the only anti-nade operator that can catch things in quick succession as long as he has the magnets ready. And so for an early rush, Wamai is the more consistent pick. And so this is a major, major change, but I wouldn't call it an all out nerf. The core of what the ADS is all about is still there. And no matter what, it'll always be a threat to the attacking side. The fact that it works infinitely is a buff, like regardless of the change. And it's now even more of a passive gadget that'll have an effect throughout the entire Entire round. Next up is the newest addition to Rainbow Six Siege with Aruni and her Surya Gate. Now, I've got to be honest, this gadget is one of the most unique and innovative gadgets that we've seen added in quite a long time, and it's because it'll have some kind of effect on every single round. The Surya Gate is anti entry, anti area, and anti nade, all in one somewhat strange way. So, when it's placed, it takes less than a second to deploy, and once it's up, any defender will have the ability to pass through without issue. As an attacker, if you touch the gadget in any way, it'll take a 40 point chunk out of your health. And so you should avoid ever trying to pass through this thing while it's up. Now, once it is up, it's 
100% indestructible. Yes, you heard that correct. There isn't any gadget in the game that destroys the generators that the gates use to deploy. It's bulletproof, explosion proof, and unaffected by melee. So once it's up, it stays up unless Aruni herself comes to retrieve it. Now, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but for all intents and purposes, this is the only gadget to ever be fully indestructible, and it'll be fascinating to see how it fares. So to actually get past the gate, there are a few ways to handle it. The first is to simply throw any projectile through it. Now, it will eat what's thrown at it, so you don't really get to use that utility, but after a second, the gate will be deactivated for a short time, and you can make a push. You can also just walk through it for the same effect, but again, you will take significant damage, and depending on the state of your health in the round, it could mean you're taken out. Another interesting tactic is to use a drone to take the fall, and yeah, you'll lose the drone, but the gate will open, and so basically any interruption to the laser will disable the gate. The devs say they want it to force attackers to be more intentional with their push, where they coordinate how and when to open the gate, and also plan for what's next, because after a short time, a defender can shoot the generator and the gate will go back up, and you'll have to do the same thing to get out. It really is just plain interesting, and for a gadget that's indestructible, it'll be intriguing to see how teams will deal with it. Now, as for Aruni, she's got a solid loadout. She will be the first defender with a DMR, and it'll be the MK14, the one Dokubi has, which maxes out with the 1.5. And then she'll also have Mozzie's P10 Roni for her SMG. I think altogether, she's a very solid operator, and her gate will have an effect on the round each and every game. Now, she does have a special treat, and it comes as a perk with her prosthetic arm that allows her to punch open holes in soft walls. Now, this can of course be used in many ways, but it makes it really easy to get a hatch open and also to make rotations, and I'd say they take just as long as the bailiff to make, and so there are better alternatives, but just to have this as a passive ability is a huge benefit. Aruni is one of the most utility-heavy operators in a while, and the devs consider her somewhat of an architect on defense. Her role is to set up the objective in ways that just haven't ever been possible, and to slow down attackers ready for a push. Personally, I feel the attackers will be forced to communicate a way in and out of an objective now, which really is a first at this level. Now, the one big drawback, at least for her gadget, is that you have to be in close proximity of a doorway, hatch, wall, or window to get it deployed. During the prep phase, this obviously isn't an issue, but if a major wall gets open and there are attackers holding angles, it'll be next to impossible to set up a Surya gate to prevent them from coming in, and so you kind of have to commit to where you place them. But similar to Mira, you will always feel Aruni's presence on the map, and there will always need to be a plan to execute on if you want to truly counter her. Moving on to a change that's been anticipated since back in Steel Wave, and that's finally the rework to Habana. So as expected, Habana can now choose exactly how many ex Cairo she fires, and it makes a world of difference. She now has a clear reason to be picked over Ace or Thermite, because she just has more options with her Breacher. If you want to make a small hole in a reinforced wall to peek through, choose two. If you want to open up a hatch, choose four. And if you want to blow open a wall like you've always been able to, select the usual six. I think this makes Habana so much more versatile and honestly more comfortable to use because you can pick exactly how you want to use the gadget or only what's needed. If you come up to a castle barricade, for instance, you don't need to worry about wasting all of your pellets. Just use two and it'll come down and you basically bank the rest. I love this and I feel like this is something that should have always been possible with Habana, but now that Ace is in the game, it's essential and it works flawlessly. Now, the last bit in this video is a major change to how runouts work in Rainbow Six Siege and they've made it much more risky. So once you jump out of a window, you now have just one second before you're spotted and it actually makes it more intense than you'd think. The thing is, as of now, if you run out or jump out, you usually have just enough time to hop back in before you get spotted. But with Operation Neon Dawn, you don't. If you do it, you must commit to it and be sure of what happens next because otherwise you'll be shown to the entire attacking team and it'll usually end badly. Now, this is obviously being done to tone down the frustration of runouts in Rainbow Six Siege and also some of the operators that do it best, like Valkyrie and Pulse. Being spotted almost instantly adds a ton of pressure to get it done perfectly and even if you do, you've still basically been spotted because there's just no way to get back inside in time and so for those that have always had issue with runouts specifically in this game, I think this is as close to it not being a thing at all that we'll ever get. And so that'll be it for this video today, guys. Make sure you click the subscribe button and turn on your post notifications because there's heaps more Neon Dawn content on the way, including some highly controversial nerfs that I just have to speak on. And so be ready for that. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video. I love you guys. Be sure to check out Demo Creator with the links below. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Hey, I'm out.